So today's January 23rd, 2021, and this is our Western Desiderata meeting. And actually, we were uh, talking before the meeting. Um, AD, do you want to continue on your uh, kind of statement, your idea of uh, what you're posing to us? Oh, sure. Yeah, I was just um, following up on how the conversation went with uh, some some someone that we interviewed and um, uh, it's just along the following along the observation that there is a lot of um, inflexibility seemingly with uh, uh, people on the left, uh, very unflinching and um, almost um, not wanting to deal with anyone who is outside, uh, you know, the the, the categories that they have, for instance, uh, people are put into boxes. Okay, you're, if you have this view about the, the virus and the mRNA therapy vaccines, then you must be on the right. Uh, and Lord, you was just saying that, yes, it seems as if we, we can't have individual individuality now. Everyone is in a box. And I mentioned that I read some essay, and I, I'm not really a thorough reader, I just skim articles. And one of them said that this was a long time coming, um, that um, children of a certain generation who are now adults and in the positions of uh, authority or power in the academe or political positions, they were raised in a way that made them safe and secure. Parents didn't want them to walk to school, they were always chaperoned, they were not allowed to play outside, uh, there was always a safe space, even in school, everybody would get medals, even though not everyone is an outstanding student. So it, it you know, the gist is that now that they're adults, um, if they're, they have some uncomfortable thing that they hear or encounter, or a person with a different view that they encounter, then they want to cancel and not even hear um, what that person has to say. Or speakers who come to the universities, they're canceled. So there's really no chance to, to get to know other people's views and maybe interact and learn. Um, that, that's what I was uh, just uh, observing. You know, it's kind of interesting that you mentioned that putting in a box because some people can't, I don't know why, somebody must have, I think people have got interested in meditation, but so, some people have started commenting, quite a few people have started commenting on this video, episode 31 in the video queue, and it's about Horus set and the Jedi, and I, you know, because people were really triggered, and I got, I got a lot of shit posts, then I, I went back to try and figure out why, and so I was just listening to it before we came on now. And I actually mentioned this because I went through the Egyptian mythology and that's exactly what um, Set does to Horus is uh, gets him in a box. And I was saying about the atomization of this of our community. So Set uh, puts him in a box and then chops him up and spreads him all over Egypt, Horus all over Egypt. Um, actually, Osiris. Yeah, it was Osiris. But but uh, um, yeah, the, uh, that that I was trying to say it's a metaphor for exactly what you know the alien cortex does. It tries to categorize everybody, label them. In other words, it's a metaphor for putting them in a box. And then once they're in a box, you know, they get chopped up. They all get chopped up, 
an atomite. But you know, I think it came from the. Oh, by the way, if if people are interested in the in meditation, then I I kept on referring to this earlier one where I said about the phosphines, and I kind of forgot this episode thirty one has uh, a whole lot about meditation in, in the Egyptians, and so um, I still have to go back and figure out why <laughs> everybody's getting so triggered about it but i definitely trod on some toes i think that people have a very definite idea about meditation and there are a lot of these yoga instructors and healthy life you know life coaches and, that, and they're teaching this yoga that was completely fabricated in the west in about 1920 and I think that they're getting upset because I said some nasty things about new ages and said it's not about all the stuff, which I guess they were saying is about unity and coming together. And I said, like, nah, man, meditation's got fuck all to do with that, man. So anyway, I've still, you see, the, the guys won't, won't really engage. Again, it's uh, this thing where they just shit post and leave. And so it's like, you know, I, I want to say like, you know, well, share what you know and so like oh another idiot talking about egypt and shit he doesn't know about and it's like okay well i'm willing to learn <laughs> you know instruct me but it's like you know the, it just doesn't doesn't go anywhere no, no everybody's lost the the ability to have a dialogue it's ironic too that um the new age practitioners or meditators talk about unity or uh, all being one, but then there's all this um, <laughs> rejection of the other and putting in categories and um, not allowing to other people to speak or not engaging with others. So where is that unity and being all one? It's very um, ironic and uh, oxymoronic that they would say we're all one <laughs> let's unite we're all yeah. united uh but they don't want to deal with the other it, it's a dichotomy because they i mean that's what dichotomy means die is two and cotomy means cut so it means they want to slice it but that's what identity politics does it's like slices everybody into an identity it's exactly it's, i think that's what the egyptians were saying in the myth <laughs> so anyway i i would recommend um now that i'm just going through that episode 31 i think i'll probably post it on on reddit again but um because the meditation is one of the the topics on the agenda for today um so yeah the what happened in the eastern meeting today is it was i spent about three hours um talking to people about ufology and doing a kind of monologue on ufology and my theory and i i um i hope you watch it because it what i'm trying to say is um that you know i the flipping and stuff if i'm wrong about the flipping i can't see there's any downside i mean all it is is a memento mora it's kind of telling you you know life is short <laughs> you know don't waste any time and it's like yeah there's no harm if I'm completely wrong about the flipping. It's like you know, you still does your service. But you see, the ufology stuff is not so true. I could I could steer you really wrong. So what I you know, if if my theory on aliens is wrong and you buy into it, um, I could could cost you if uh, you know there's the. It could be ne negative consequences. I mean, it could cost you your heaven. If the aliens come down, a lot of people think the aliens are going to come down, take take all the good people off the planet to, you know, in the rapture and take them off to heaven. And say, so, like, is that likely? I mean, we just toasted one planet. Do you really think these guys want us? <laughs> it's like, how self-important can you possibly get? You, you think you're such a precious darling that aliens are going to come and take you off? It's like, you know, I think, they're probably going to say, oh, well, this is a failed experiment and just toast us. But anyway, I, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm wrong and a spaceship comes down and everybody starts getting, you know, space encounters of the third kind and everybody gets a book. There's so many of the movies from Hollywood where the aliens come down and take us to heaven. And it's like, 
if I'm wrong, uh, you know, maybe you say, oh, no, I, I know, I remember what you said, <laughs> like, don't get on board. And so, <laughs> you know, if, and then, like, you left on Earth, and they go, like, oh, well, we left them in the Petri dish, and we might as well toast it now, because the toast Earth experiment's over. But I'm saying, you know, you should stay on Earth and stay in the Petri dish, let those idiots, because I swear it's like the, the, um, the Twilight Zone movie, the black and white one, where there's like how to serve man, but they will go out and they find <laughs> they toast. either way. I don't see it working out very well if you get on that spaceship. But I go through the logic and but uh, you know, take it with a pinch of salt because it's just my theory. You've got to come up with your own because I, I don't want you. you know, I'm, I'm staying on earth, and if you stay on earth as well, I don't want you to come in at me and say, You bastard. <laughs> it's like, oh, sorry, I got that wrong. <laughs> What can I say? <laughs> I shouldn't have listened to me. You should have gone on that spaceship. But uh, yeah. Anyway, the whole point of it was it was uh, the reason why it came up was I put it in the in the manifesto. There's a little piece in the manifesto. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think many people have read the manifesto actually. But there's a little piece on. I'm warning you about. There might be the, a lot of euphemania and stuff before the flippening. And what I tried to do was I tried to basically just, I didn't want to get into the subject because I don't like it. Um, but I tried to just warn everybody off by saying, look, you're going to see some weird shit and it's all natural. It's all, you know, piezoelectric stuff that you're going to see what happens before earthquakes and stuff. But don't get sucked into all the ufology and the mania. And I said, you know, just as a joke, you know, if a, if a spaceship comes down and, you know, don't get on it because you probably lunch. Um, and I thought that was enough. And uh, everybody, you know, and then and then I realized that there's something brewing. I'm getting more and more attention that um, I get a feeling they're going to spring something on us, the Pentagon and these guys. You know, there's there's more and more stuff and more and more interest in ufology. It's going mainstream more. And I just get the feeling something's brewing. So I started to think I'm not going to get away with this one <laughs> because I kind of, you know, all of this stuff is starting well in advance of earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff. So you know, nobody's going to believe me. <laughs> so I thought I can't just wave it off that easily. I have to explain a little bit more to you. Um, hi, TB. I, uh, I'm telling, telling them, uh, them a little bit about the discussion this morning and the UFOs. So, yeah, I, I felt I had to go into it. Um, I've doxxed myself a little bit. Um, I hope uh, nobody tracks me down. <laughs> um, and I don't, I don't think I, I crossed any lines that are going to get me bumped off in the night, but I, I'm, I might be getting close. We might get into a, a stage where, where we're in dangerous territory on ufology and stuff. Anyway, I would do watch the whole thing and then and then let's let's discuss it more. Um, yeah, I, I mean, but one of the things that I mentioned is like the there is a deep state thing. So it's like, um, you people say, well, why doesn't the government release all this stuff on aliens? And uh, you know, they've come out. In case you don't know what's been going on. Is they've come out now and said no, this stuff is real. So you know, every basically that's one more tin hat, a tin foil hat that's come down. I mean, it's like man, it must be tough being a normie these days because you know all these things that you said this, these are tin foil hat things, and you say like grab a tin foil hat, man, because this is how what people with tin foil hats, including me, have been trying to tell people for decades, and like. Sorry, man. Try to tell you. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, you laughed, and now it's all coming true. And so, you know, I try. I've been telling people for decades: is don't don't get on this fucking spaceship when it comes down. But um, explain the reasons why. Yes, you know why it might <laughs> come down. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't want to re recap it, but the, the reason why they can't tell you all of this stuff is because they've been hiding it. They've been hiding it for, for decades. And, and so, I mean, presidents, Congress, Senate and stuff, 
they they haven't they don't know i mean a pro, you see the deep state is real that basically a president is just just a flunky he's it's just a marionette and so you know it's they they're not important they're not important enough to know this real shit and you say well who does know the real shit and you say the deep state all these guys are you know that really run the country is like they there's it's not a democracy and stuff and so if they told everybody that um they came clean with all the stuff and there was congressional investigation it's like well, well hang on a minute this is the most important thing in the human race and so you know how could you have been keeping it quiet for all these years i mean even presidents didn't know and then, so the, you know, then they're going to have to say. But you see, you see, the problem is they're going to say, "Well, what else? If, if if this is what kind of thing, what else have you been keeping a, a from?" And say, "Like everything, the whole farm is like, it's like you don't run this farm. The, the you know, the whole illusion of democracy and presidents being part of the executive." And say, "Like no, they they think they're part of the executive, but the control levers are not connected to anything." So I mean. Uh, I mean, I'll give you odds of 99 to 1 that if Joe Biden ever opened the nuclear football, he would just find a real football with a post-it note going on. Sorry, Joe, you know, this is way too important to give it to you. So I hope you understand. But that, I mean, that, I mean, I, this, I, I give you zero chance, the, close to zero chance that the nuclear football actually has anything in it other than a you know, lunchbox. And you know, the Secret Service keep their sandwiches in there. But there's no way that the president actually has the launch codes and stuff. <laughs> because, I mean, I just can't see it. Because also, they publish about, the, they keep on publishing about the nuclear football. If those really were the codes, I wouldn't tell you. Uh, but since everybody knows about the nuclear football, you can bet your ass it's not for real. And then, I mean, it, it basically, it's an invitation to a first strike. And so, so obviously, if they tell you about the nuclear football and it's always going around there with the president, it's like, yeah, they just want to attack the, you know, attract the first strike and over there, and and then so the the real guy with the launch code somewhere else can can make a decision. But you know, they, they wouldn't tell everybody. <laughs> so I mean, I, I I think, you know, the, all it's all this delusion that, that they've created, and um, you know, if, um, you're talking about. The narrative unraveling I mean, come on, it's barely started um but yeah uh, the, i hope you watched some of those videos on the ufos um lou, lou lizardo <laughs> lizardo and and stuff that that's very interesting stuff um i'm i uh yeah i'm getting a bit behind on the u, u ufology but um i told you all the stuff that i know um and um yeah so anyway I'm, i don't know if i made made that clear but I, I i mentioned how these things work how it was explained to me how they were they reverse engineering these you know spaceships and stuff um and they have been they're not really getting anywhere from what i hear but um the the way they work and i described i described it in the meeting and that essentially they Space, spaceship, alien spaceship works, where they put a sigil or you know these letters, this script, on components, and the components it makes the components work, and they don't really know how, but they have been told that they self-assemble, and they, you know, this component, you know, you put this stamp over here, and it some, somehow makes something distant one with a different. Um, stamp on it work, but the, they know that the the writing on all these components is very crucial to to its functionality. That's what I'm told. So I asked for <laughs> for, for the symbols, and what they found, they said, well, they I get they I was given a complete set um, of what the symbols are. They don't know where they are or how they work. But if you want to know what the symbols are, that's the alien script that I used. I took that alien script that, they, that I was given and I just assigned letters, you know, the, of the English alphabet and, and to it. And that's all the alien script and stuff that I've been using. And I put it in my videos just to troll the guys. I don't know how legit it is. I mean, you know, I, I, 
you know, for all I know, that if visiting politicians go to Roswell or something, they give give that shit out to them on beer mats. For all I know, <laughs> but it's, I I am absolutely certain that the source that gave it to me absolutely um, believes in all the stuff, and they they in a position to know. So I have no reason to doubt anything anything I'm told. But um, yeah, so anyway, I hope you see where this is going. That if you put a magic sigil on it then they're doing woo stuff it's basically it's just their own telepathy and it's it's a magic trick that these spacecraft fly by magic and the, the magic is invoked just like john d would do you know john d is the magician for elizabeth the first and you know we, have, we they would summon enochian angels and they have these books of magic and how to summon demons and um um uh all of these um uh, what, what do you call them grimoires all these kind of things books of spells and so it's spells these things work with spells and you know you can do the symbol and stuff so it's it's you know like magic like like lionel does is what i'm told is that how they they work and so but it's not it's not real magic it's doing you know my, my theory is they're doing doing it with their own telepathy it definitely needs you know the things don't work on their own. They they they, they need human telepathy to work, right? On and telekinesis and stuff. So that's that's what I'm told, and it all you know it all fits together. But it's you know Harry Potter stuff. But they they're trying to reverse engineer Harry Potter stuff with um, you know using science. And so I went into you know stuff I've done and on on the fringes, and so. Yeah, I've never had a security clearance. <laughs> I, th I think I've learned a hell of a lot more with that one because if the people that have security clearance are very narrow um, and very narrow a areas, they kind of read into the, the, those videos you see. If you see those UFO videos are posted up on Reddit, they talk about being read into these programs and stuff like that. But um, from what the people I've uh, spoken and spoken to me, the yeah, I think the general public thinks that you just sign the official secrets act and then you get <laughs> you get into top but it's nothing like that it's it's to get read read into some of these you know dark programs you they they i i can only describe them as medieval oaths they're, they're medieval blood oaths and you know they basically will castrate you and chop you up and Put, you know, really, really bad stuff and do it to your family and stuff. And, I, and people are scared, so I guess they've done it. <laughs> but I mean, it's really harsh stuff. And so it's it's it goes beyond regular government or any kind of, you know, oh, you'll go to jail for a few years. No, it's, if the really deep stuff, you'll have a hell of a lot more than we'll go to jail for. But anyway, I'm I'm in the clear because I'm, I'm not eligible for security clearance. I was in a foreign military. If you've been commissioned, that's like, you know, that's like a blood oath to, to, to a foreign country. So you, you, you won't you won't get a security clearance. But a lot of people assumed I had one. So I heard a lot of shit that I wasn't wasn't allowed to hear. And, um, and I heard so much of this stuff is like that. You know the drinking game and stuff that I told you about is that's how I got all all my information that I, I told you. But anyway, it's all rather fascinating stuff, and I'll go into any any one of the things that you want to in more depth in the in the uh, the Eastern meeting this morning. Um, but yeah, I left a lot of things hanging, and people might want to <laughs> draw me out on that, and I'll do that. Um, I, I, I'm not particularly trying to hide anything. I'm just, I, I don't want to steer anybody in that direction. And, and but my, my, my aim is to just tell you, leave all that shit alone. It's, uh, I explain why and the thing and stuff. And it's saying like, it's, it's, it looks like all, you know, the weirdest shit known to man. It looks like it's about to come out. And so if it does, um, just don't get sucked in. It's like people are going to lose their fucking minds. Just, just, <laughs> just, just know that it's, you know, I don't believe there's aliens out there. I don't believe that space has <laughs> aliens in it, but people don't like that. 
you know, there's so many people that like get really, really upset if you say we're alone in the universe. Um, yeah, I, I'm very seldom found people that say, you know, or that that don't get very upset when you say, I mean, especially science people and stuff and uh, people that are into into science and um, it's science is really a religion. And so that's the version of faith is <laughs> that there are beings out there. And I don't think so. But the, you see, it, it's all of this stuff is because it's all religion. Anybody that hears this, they, they will say, fuck, you doesn't know anything. And they would give a million things. But I, I will talk them down from, you know, I'm, I'm not talking from ignorance here. So, so if, if anybody comes and says, you know, you know, bollocks and, you know, what about this? And what, you know, if, if nobody's coming from space, you know, what are fast walkers? And I'll tell you what all that stuff is. In fact, I do. And then it's not what you think. The dangerous thing is it's not what the guys in the Pentagon think. And that's, that's the danger is what's happening. What I can see happening is all these factions in the Pentagon, they're disappearing up their own ass. And having said that, I was talking about that, you know, episode 31 with Horus and the, and the Jedi. Um, I suddenly realized while I was re-looking at it to try and figure out why people were getting upset, I suddenly realized that the, I did actually mention um, some of this um, in the Egyptian context. That, that You can see the Egyptians going nuts too. They, they also going nuts also with symbols and <laughs> they're kind of going the same path as the pentagon but my interpretation of you know i mean of studying quite a lot the and going to egypt a couple of times is that the, the guys are going nuts if you look at egyptology and you look at the you know all the um the hieroglyphs and stuff like that they uh if you try and understand exactly what, what the mythology is and what they they're doing and stuff you you know i i think i figured it out but it, the long and the short of it is they they're going nuts they're going on they're going on an acid trip um and they're creating their their own illusions and so um yeah it seems to be a kind of aryan speciality and i think the ancient egyptians were aryans the hyksos came from that branch and so so anyway the um that's that's ufologist stuff um i did on the just looking at so on the, uh, the if you didn't see those videos with the uh, the australian guy um uh what's his name coltine no um colt whatever but it's this australian journalist who's been doing the he's he's kind of broken the traditional journalist taboo about all these woo subjects and he's just finding fascinating stuff and it's being very well received um there's there's incredible interest in this and so it's it's becoming mainstream rapidly now but i think it's becoming mainstream rapidly because there's a certain faction in the pentagon and the, these are the guys that i've always assumed that when when they did space force and that i was like oh fuck no because what i think what the space force is and stuff is these guys clearly there's a bunch of guys who i know for a fact are gearing up for interplanetary war and clearly they're getting funded i mean the space force and all of them i presume is them and they but so but from my point of view is we're in a very dangerous situation we're going going to war with the creation of our own minds um, we're not, they're not little green men out there. I'm pretty certain of it. But they, they, they are and they aren't, right? So but the way you must think of these things, and if you listen to me, is more like paranormal things. These are more much closer to Skinwalker Ranch. And if you don't know about Skinwalker Ranch, <laughs> Google that. <laughs> Have a stiff drink before you do that. Um, I, um, I, I don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to dox Hank too much, but um, Hank uh, is quite famous. Um, and uh, when, whenever there's 
when, whenever there's um uh whenever there's a, a big UFO thing and stuff, then the news media calls him up and wants to interview him <laughs> because he, he is well known for this certain thing. There's, there's something, the reason why I'm telling you this is there's some, something important involved here and it came across in some of the UFO videos. And that, that was, it, although Hank is famous for this thing, is basically, he's, he's not, how shall I put this? He's, uh, he cannot remember any of the stuff he's famous for. So <laughs> you might think, well, why, <laughs> why do the newspapers have him on file as a contact for the weird shit and stuff? And um, it it kind of, he, he basically he only knows the story from um, his parents and his family because he told them the story. Um, you know, and he blanked out after that. He had no memory of it. And you might say, well, why does the world care about, um, you know, some some guy uh, who told, a, you know, as a kid, he tells these weird story to his parents and and then can't remember a word of it. <laughs> why, why are these guys still calling him up to this day? And it wasn't so much what he saw. What he saw was weird. <laughs> but it's what happened after that blew everybody's fucking mind. <laughs> so if I tell you, then, you know, I'm not, I don't think he wants uh, attention and stuff. So I don't, don't want to um, lead you too far that down that path. But anyway, um, the, if you want to know roughly what I'm talking about, there's this guy called Bob B Bigelow. He was head of uh, Evergreen Aviation. And um, he is big into the paranormal. Um, and uh, so it answers one of the questions. I can, I can definitely answer some of these questions like why, you know, why can't people ever get a decent photograph of this? Why, why is it always grainy? Why, why is it always people alone? Or, you, know, it does, you know, Michael Shermer just has a fit on that. Um, and... I kind of explained it a little bit in the Eastern meeting this morning, but but um, if anybody's interested, I can definitely tell you that it's, it's very difficult to take. It's kind of like part of the deal that you can't um, take pictures or get any real scientific information or recordings. And so Bob Bigelow went down this route. Um, and I think part of the revelations that are coming now, I think he's got something to do with it. He's, he's a rich guy. He's but spent a long time trying to get all of this stuff disclosed from the government with, with various success. But um, they, you know, they, they, he got scientific teams together to try and get this particularly paranormal place um, and do scientific research. And the guys could never, do it. I mean, they had these incredible things that they saw and stuff, and they they um, just couldn't get the cameras to work and the machines to work and stuff. So they all saw it. They all recorded it. But, um, you know, there's nothing you can take to the rest of the world and say, like, oh my God, what the fuck? Is this? Well, they, they do sometimes get pictures and that. I mean, there's there are some, but uh, it's it's very woo stuff, and I'll explain what, why if you if anybody's interested why you can't um, get these these pictures and stuff. But anyway, so that's all of that. And just again, let me reiterate: I'm only going through this stuff because it's very very fascinating, and people are going to be sucked in. And it's macchio, right? It's, it's pure macchio. It's it's basically it's a distraction. Um, if you go down this rabbit hole again, it's like. Kool-Aid and stuff. That's why everything like called Kool-Aid. These are siren songs. They will suck you in. But ultimately, what they're trying to do is it's our own mind trying to, it's our own alien cortex trying to delay you from you know dealing with it. It's a protective measure of the alien cortex ultimately, and so it it wants to deflect you from some. You see, imagine this. I mean, it's like um, it's like you got two heads, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I used this footage in some of my videos from this movie called How to Get Ahead in Advertising. 
I don't know if anybody saw that movie, but it's it's, an, it's a great fucking movie, especially if you know what I've been telling you about the alien cortex. But it's a guy who just basically starts growing a head out of, out of his neck. That's a completely separate entity. It's basically a metaphor for your alien cortex, and that's literally it. There, there have actually been cases where, you know, co-joined twins, you're not allowed to call them Siamese twins anymore. But they, so co-joined co twins, there have been cases, I, I believe, where guys have actually done that. They actually had this functional head. It, you know, so you can imagine if you have, your whole body is completely controlled by you, but you've got this head that can actually talk and think and stuff. And I remember being told as a kid that, you know, there's, uh, it drew, one guy, it drove him mad because he, he you know, the, the head was nasty and criticized him and, you know, really was very unhappy because it didn't have control over them, legs and arms. And so the guy always wanted to cut the head off, you know, basically go over and get the thing cut off. But of course, it would scream blue murder whenever he tried. But I, I just think that's such a nightmare. But it's, um, it's really kind of a metaphor for the predicament we're in with the alien cortex. We've got this extra head sticking out of our necks virtually. And, you know, you've got to get, remove it surgically. <laughs> and, and it doesn't want to go. So it's, uh, and it's clever. And it'll say like, you know, hey, you know, distraction, inversion, substitution, <laughs> doing all of this stuff. It's saying like, don't cut me off. Saying like, well, as meditation and stuff is, slowly <laughs> Try to get this. yeah it, it's yeah. like look over there there's an alien <laughs> yeah exactly it's it's like you know hey uh don't cut my head off it's like look alien squirrel it's always squirrel so this is definitely in the category of squirrel but yeah um but anyway ask me any other thing about that then i'll do my best to tell you what what I know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the ufologists and stuff, it's its become such a big thing and it's such a religion. It's, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't like talking about veganism because nobody can keep their head straight. They're all just talking from zealotry. And like, the you know, UFO crowd are worse. <laughs> They're worse than that. Yeah, it's funny too because um, one of the things I forgot to mention this morning is like this is like a long time ago. I talked to one of my cousins and he's all obsessed with this alien shit, and he thinks that you know humans never landed on the moon. That all that stuff is like it's so I can't even like understand like why he thinks these things. But um, yeah, the the ufology part of what he thinks makes sense now. It's like a you know like you said a religion. It's like it's a cultish sort of psychedelic trip. Uh, but anyway, the, I mean, the yeah, the the space, the astronauts and stuff, all these guys in the space, the cosmonauts and stuff, they they've been seeing, you know, like if you go into space as an astronaut, you'll see a hundred UFOs. They've just been keeping it quiet. I remember reading as a kid um, about uh, I think the first guy was John Glenn, and. John Glenn's story was he was completely surrounded by these kind of angels that were like lights and stuff. And um, NASA put out a thing saying, you know, oh, no, it was just his, uh, he had a urine bag, which he jettisoned from the thing. So it was just frozen things of urine and stuff. And I thought, hang on a minute, this is not right. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't hang around the spacecraft and, and do intelligent stuff. And so I, I knew as a kid, I said, like, this is freaking weird, man. But it turns out that, yeah, all these guys have been seeing these for years. They just classify them. But I, I think uh, they they are they all are all in their head, right? They're, they're actually in the guy's head. It's not, they're not really little, little green men there. But if if that sounds like pretty prosaic and talking about like I'm talking Michael Shermer, you've got to listen to the, the earlier meeting because my theory on what they are is actually a lot weirder than little green men. So it's been much, much more woo. And that's also why I don't like talking about it. Because you know, if you if you, you used to get a tinfoil hat for believing in aliens and stuff, and well you have to check that in now because it's official, they real. 
you, you, I mean, the UFOs, everything, the whole bang shoot that you used to get a tinfoil hat for is now official. So uh, if you, if you're still laughing at people for UFOs, you, you're a little bit behind the curve here because events are rapidly overtaking people. But if you think, you know, that you, know, you get a tinfoil hat for just, or you used to get a tinfoil hat for just believing in the, in these UFOs, you know, you'll get, hundred tinfoil hats when you hear my explanation of what I think they are. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Well, I look I, forward to watching that video from the Eastern meeting. I always look forward to watching the Eastern meetings. Yeah, I, I'm, Gary recorded it. I, I, you know, I was thinking before the meeting, there's no way the universe is going to conspire to let me say what I was said on that thing. And w normally what happens is, if I try and say any of that stuff on a, you know, over the, over the machine <laughs> here, um, there will be interference because basically I'm, I'm talking about psychotronics and stuff like that. And normally you get an example of psychotronics when you, you know, if you're explaining this kind of thing, don't be surprised if, <laughs> you know, the recording fails or that, like you don't get it. the same thing about Bigelow that you can't actually record it. And, and so, um, I I was thinking, oh God, I, I, you know, as soon as people started sending emails saying, oh, I won't be able to be there to record it, I thought, oh, you know, I'm I'm going to do this one unrecorded and just <laughs> tell whoever's on because I don't think we're going to get a recording out of this. But it looks like Gary got it, and so you'll you'll see it. What uh, the just the psychotronic aspects of it is like it's very dependent on your emotional state so you can say shit about the machine talk against the machine but you have to be very careful that you, you don't get you know your pulse racing or get uh, um there's a very um you get to know it after a while but there's a very clear state of mind a very or not clear specific state of mind that that you, if you're in that state you will affect the electronics and stuff so it's like um and often in in panic or you know very heightened state in, in kind of extreme states then then you you can affect the, the electronics but and much more than people realize as i explained um but uh yeah but uh if you you can learn by kind of like controlling your emotions and your emotional state kind of Control, almost controlling your autonomic nervous system, it, um, you can then keep yourself in a state where you can actually say almost anything without fucking things up. But, but uh, yeah, if, if anybody starts getting really freaked out or woo, you remember I keep on talking about the cop? You see, okay, maybe I didn't say this in the, I did kind of say this in the, in the but, but we, we are all telepathic and we have, um, Tele telekinetic um, abilities and stuff that they're, they're just all locked up in this kind of logical vault is that you you know because we have you know what what enables all of these kind of psychotronic and um, telekinetic abilities and they called cities in the in the east and stuff they have no problem with this in India, by the way. It's the West and all the Enlightenment ideals that have made everybody very nervous about this. But it's because in the science became our religion. And so the stuff that was kind of native to India and and a lot of countries, South America and stuff, they had no problem with this stuff. But we have a big problem in the West because our religion became Enlightenment, humanism and science. And so, you know, it's a very big heresy um you know but we, we didn't get any any away from the catholic church or anything that's what the enlightenment idealists wanted but we just replaced it with scientism and it's like there's every bit is the exact same phenomena as the religion they were trying to replace and so you know if you say anything that's a bit woo then everybody loses their minds because they've been warned against heresies and stuff but you see, the, the fact that they do that, you have to think through the logic. If you have telekinetic powers and you utterly don't believe in Wu or you don't want to see it, your own Wu powers are shutting it down. 
So I can't, you can't, it's, it's this tautology. You can't, you, you know, if, if Michael Shermer can't, you see, Michael Shermer's like, oh, fuck off. You're talking absolute shit, you know. He's like, oh, what can I say? He's like, Michael Shermer, you're never going to see anything woo because your own woo powers shut it down. You know, oh, man, that's just fucking two-bit, you know, hack um, motivational speaker stuff. This is just ridiculous. I'm saying, yep, keep on saying that. Your yeah, it's funny. Good, it, 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 it's like that one video where it's talking about how, like, uh, words are magic, you know, um, talking about the woo stuff that's casting a spell, and then he shuts it down with his woo stuff, uses a counter spell. <laughs> Yeah, but basically, if you try and I mean, I've done all of this. I've tried to show people and unlock their cities and stuff. And um, you, okay, <laughs> it goes two ways. <laughs> so what I've, you see, I, I developed cities and stuff. I, I don't like them and I don't want them. And so I, but you know, to prove to myself that I wasn't going crazy which I definitely was, by the way, but it, to prove to myself that these were real, um, because they're so fucking bizarre, um, but, you know, I I tested it on other people. So, I, you know, I took it scientifically and tried to see, like, okay, what the fuck's going on? And I'll use it. Didn't get freaked out and you know, run to a psychiatrist or anything, which I think most people do. And then you're in real trouble if you do that. But I knew enough not to do that. So I wanted to know exactly what this shit was. So I used myself as a scientific experiment. And of course, to validate what I was seeing, you know, I got other people involved. And I would always go one of two ways. If, if, if the person was really, really anti and they're freaked out or something like that, um, then uh, they would definitely prevent you show you know prevent me showing them shit. Um, but uh, the first people I tested and said you know like this, I kind of tried to introduce them to think so. Like I think I've got these like weird powers, and would you just check them out? And they they bought it bought it completely. So. Um, and lots of people I, I did this to. So, they, but what I found was that whatever things I could do, when I told somebody, I was priming them. So I, I was. They were getting more and more excited and getting into the state where all of these things come out. And so I was. I suddenly realized I'm putting them in that state. So when I was, when I showed people, it amazed me that when. You know, I, I was seeing some small effects that I could see. And then when I showed other people, suddenly the thing got you know, really more, more dramatic, more than double. And I thought, my God, what the fuck's going on? It's like, why, do, when I show people shit, does it I see way more than I can do on my own? And then I started to realize it's like, fucking hell, everybody can do this. What I'm doing is just unlocking it in other people. But if you prime them and believe them, and they, they, then like, you know, they are doing the trick. So you know, it's like you, you. you but anyway, I gaslit a lot of people. <laughs> I don't, I don't like. I can, if anybody wants to know more about this, I can tell you in detail. But, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't like that and i can explain to you why i i don't like it but um, i you know if you yeah, yeah it's like that shit gives me trouble like in in my in my daily life and so yeah i i would you know i i would prefer much prefer to live in michael Shermer's world put it that way where everything you know shit shit stays on the table but the um, I don't like everybody likes Harry Potter and stuff. I loathe Harry Potter. It's a fucking nightmare for me. And so it, all of this stuff is like a Harry Potter world. And I've never really understood why people like it. I loathe it. <laughs> it's like, does does anybody like Harry Potter? I, I think it makes me want to vomit. I mean, the whole ethos of them living in a magical world where you know books snap at you and stuff is like, oh my god, it's fucking it's a horror show for me. Everybody goes like, oh, can't get enough of that. And I'm like, really? Jesus. But you see, for, for me, 
the real world has been like Harry Potter sometimes. I don't, I don't like it. And so I, I shut it down. But anyway, what does people think about all of this? <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, like I said, uh, during the Eastern meeting, it really, you know, connected the dots for the UFO stuff. The UFO phenomenon makes a lot of sense now why people, you know, see these things and all that. Yeah, it made a lot of sense. I, like I said, I kind of suspected it being some kind of psychic phenomenon, but laying it out, you guys just got to watch the Eastern meeting if you want to really dive in and um, get the details. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm just piecing things I've heard in the past and things that could be related to this. So with the phenomenon of ghosts, would this be similar to aliens? Because it's... I in... think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Like its own, yeah. it's like its own egregore. They're sort of doing a like cultish practice, yeah. Yeah, I mean, all these things are, are for real. You, you can, but you're projecting them. You see, everybody thinks that a ghost is outside you and stuff. And I'm, no, you're projecting it. It's like, I mean, if there really are little green men out there, I mean, and the, this goes so far that, I mean, I'm, um, apparently I've been told that they have bodies, you know, in like, probably in more secret places than Roswell. But uh, out of these crashed craft in the, the, in the 50s and stuff, they retrieved bodies. And so it's like, you know, it's, so, you know, a lot of these people would say, like, Hugh doesn't know what he's talking about. These things are real. You know, you can, there's a hangar somewhere in, in near Roswell where these things are. And I say, yeah, but my claim is that they're still manifestations of your own mind. You can manifest <laughs> a real concrete object. You can even manifest an alien's body. So what I'm saying is even more woo than just the little green men out there. I'm saying, no, they're they solid, <laughs> they're real, but but you made them with your head. See, see where, where I'm coming from here is uh, Alistair Crowley. So the way you look at these things is more the Alistair Crowley, um, Jack Parsons, and you know Robert Anton Wilson is, is those those you, they those kind of things. This you know the Jack Parsons story and stuff, right? Does anybody know? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I don't recall. Story. So, have you heard of uh, JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory? Pasadena, in California, right? <laughs> yeah, it's in Pasadena. It's in Pasadena, and so, so, um, yeah, J JPL is. They're the guys that made the rockets. Bernard von Braun and then came down, you know, the Operation Paperclip. They brought Bernard von Braun and all of these people to the States to, to work on rockets. And they worked with um, Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons was like with Goddard and these guys were the early rocketeers in, in America. But uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory is not really what it's called. It was called Jack Parsons Laboratory. The <laughs> JPL stands for Jack Parsons. It's just... Jack Parsons is a little bit controversial, so they changed it to Jet Propulsion, but it's an insider joke. But it, anyway, if you want to see the early history of rocketry and NASA and stuff, it's like wall to wall woo. Um, and if you, you know, if you, well, Mike, you can, if you want, you can go visit, go go visit uh, what's right. called Devil's Valley or something, you know. <laughs> Do you know about that and stuff? Yeah, as well, that was Vaguely, all Jack, Jack, but Parsons. Yeah. Jack Parsons used to do what I did. <laughs> and that was like, he wasn't scared of this shit. He would go and, you know, try and summon the demon, which is what I also did. And they, you find some pretty weird shit pretty, pretty fucking fast. But Jack, um, uh, um, yeah, we're... I, I didn't know. So, yeah, I think I've mentioned Pasadena before, but uh, yeah, I was in a startup in Pasadena. And so the very first time I went to Pasadena, there's, there's, um, there's this kind of bridge or causeway or something that you go through. You know, it's got all these old 1930s 
lamps. They actually have swastikas on them, believe it or not. There's an interesting bit of history that uh, <laughs> that people took me and said, like, you know, you won't believe this, but um, Pasadena in the 1930s was very straight on, you know, salute. And so much so that they all the street lights, uh, they they all these art deco street lights, but they have swastikas and, and they, they have because it's historical now they they keep on having these petitions to try and remove them, but it's such a part of Pasadena's history that they've left them and good on them. Uh, but but uh, anyway, when you go over this bridge with all these um, lights on it and stuff and all those art, art deco, I think it's is it pretty close to Mount Wilson then? Or am I getting that wrong? Anyway, when I went over that bridge, I felt something straight away. Um, and um, and yeah, the guys who lived in, a lot of Armenian guys who live in Pasadena. So business partners were Armenian, some of the guys who worked in Armenia. But, but they told me immediately that say, yeah, this uh, this bridge is freaking weird. It's haunted as hell. And uh, Mike, do you know about this? That basically they have all these people have pitched up, picked up hitchhikers. All the stories that you've ever heard about, you know, you tell as a teenager around the campfire about, you know, these stories picking up uh, hitchhikers that then disappear or so, you know, oh, my daughter died 10 years ago. All of those, they came from that fucking bridge. That's where those stories come from. Have you heard about this, Mike? I heard the stories, uh, but I try to not get into that realm well in my in the past i tried yeah just because well, you've mentioned you can gaslight yourself and yeah oh yeah for sure. yeah anyway yeah. that then that bridge and the canyon is it called devil's canyon or something i can't remember what the canyon is but the, you know it if you go and google it you'll see on the entrance to the canyon it has this weird outline and so everybody has prosognosia we, db we were talking about apophenia and you can see how this happens i it, it's further to what i explained how you get sucked into this stuff and you kind of reinforce this you just start with auto suggestion and you kind of get unlock these powers the more you unlock the more you see and you get feedback on itself it's a big feedback loop and you see you can see what why it is like this because it, it's it's from the native american thing and they they you know on the entrance to the ca canyon, you, you'll be able to see this if you Google it, but it, there's a profile that looks like a demon's face. So from ancient times, the, the Native Americans thought that this place was woo. And so, of course, it makes it woo. <laughs> you know? And then, um, yeah, so as soon as as soon as everybody, anybody that enters that ca canyon is already gaslit just from them, just because they told check out the profile and I go, oh, ah, fuck off. <laughs> so anyway, it's, um, I mean, it's entertaining to dive in there a little bit, but I'm saying like, don't get sucked into that shit, man. Just know what it is because it's, it's about to become front and center and it's about to take center stage, I think. So I, I'm telling you all this to kind of inoculate you against you and saying, look, Please go with Hughes' theory on what's going on here, <laughs> because and and if if you if you're not convinced with what I what I'm saying, I ask more questions and stuff. But I, I at the risk of steering you wrong, and there are little green men out there, which I don't believe. Uh, you know, then then go with my theory and say like these people are driving themselves nuts, just like the ancient Egyptians did. Um, They're driving another... themselves nuts with own powers. Man. Another thing I'm curious about, because, you know, those papers came out of the Pentagon and all that, I wonder if they're going to, like, maybe use that to do some kind of PSYOP of some kind. Do you think that's possible? Well, well you see, this is, why, this is why it's a complete tar pit. It's just a bramble bush, because, you see, the, anything, you know, it's like the Kennedy assassination. It's not that there's not enough information. It's that there's too much. And so they've used, they have used, um a psyop they have used flying saucers in the 50s as a cover for for skunk works programs and dark programs so so you know it's it's diabolical because somebody that wants to normalize the whole thing and, and make it ordinary you know kind of quotidian and prosaic and find prosaic you know like you know 
Randy and all of those debunkers and what the debunkers are like trying to make everything safe and make everything scientific and say that there is no woo in the world is what they're trying to say and say yeah well a lot of people have told him well there's no woo for you because we have woo powers and you you fucking you don't want to see woo your powers kick in and you won't and they're like saying oh that's bullshit tautology so like sorry that's how it works dude and um and so you know the um uh you know they will say no these are have easy explanations they weather balloons they have you know these are psyops and cover cover stories for dark programs and they're absolutely right they they have been used for that so any one of these normal explanations is probably true as well so but the so it's just just a haystack and trying to pull a needle out of it is is it, really the game is to say here try pull a needle out of this haystack and it's like and it's really to just fuck you up and run out the clock so you don't attack your alien cortex so please see it in that way and even even to the extent of you know i mean these days listening to all this stuff i wouldn't be surprised if if you know you, you're going to see little green men on the lawn of the white house soon you know kind of meeting joe biden but the the it's this is seriously dangerous stuff right i mean I, from the point of view of a nuclear war because um from, I mentioned all this. There are two factions, right? There's, there's the kind of peace and love hippie guys who say, oh, these things come in peace and they they have guardrails, they're protecting us, they're trying to make sure we don't blow ourselves up. I've been told by people that we, we cannot destroy ourselves. You don't have to worry about a nuclear war because you cannot, you know, these guys will step in and shut these down. They said that they've done it in the past, you know, they they shut down the missile silos, you know, we're talking like, you know, lights and spaceships over in missile silo and they shut it down. It's one of the guys actually mentions this and I think in maybe Coltrane and the Australian guy mentioned it in his movie and stuff, but, but um, in an interview. So I've heard the same thing and the same thing about the Russians had the opposite where they like spool up the thing. So they almost get to a launch completely autonomously and so you know and we're talking with lights and spaceships over so it's not we're not talking cyber hack here and uh, so all of the conclusion these guys are saying you know is like you know what are these things trying to tell us and they're, well they're trying to give us a message and it's like they they are you know very big on nuclear stuff any of the nuclear stuff and so they they're trying to tell us you know stop this you must wind this shit down and stuff and then the other guys are going like, well, yeah, they're trying to invade the planet. They're scared shitless of nuclear weapons. And that's the only defense we have against these bastards when they invade the planet. They're looking for new territory. And so they 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 would love all the peace peace nicks to win out. And as soon as we de-escalate and get rid of all the nukes, they're going to fucking be landing armies. So they say, like, Bet, better we keep the nukes but or, or scale up. And I think those that crowd is winning because as far as I can see, everybody is scaling up all the nukes, and, you know, and then somewhere embedded in it is going to war with China and stuff. But you know, it's like you never know. You never know if the going to war with China is um, a cover for bigger fish, which you know China's in on the game, and they also gearing up for interplanetary war. It's like it's just hall of mirrors, man. The whole thing is just a complete hall of mirrors. But the, the, what I'm trying to encourage you to do is the one touchstone to just ground yourself in is uh, this is none of the stuff is real apart from these guys are getting caught up in their own cities. Cities are SIDI, you know, magic powers. Magic powers they don't know they have, right? So they're fucking themselves over. But anyway, anyway, I'm telling you really woo stuff, but it's going to get woo one way or another. You know, it's like you can go the woo way of like little green men or you can go Hughes way which is saying no this is psychological territory and Jack Parsons territory Jack Parsons spent a long time trying to manifest stuff and uh, he made he thought he manifested his own girlfriend <laughs> so he did all these spells and stuff to get this just a particular 
look of girl and this girl he had in mind. And sure enough, she turned up. And there's a story right there. What is a sigil, did you say? I missed that one. Um, oh, what is a sigil? Oh, city. Oh, city and magic power. Yeah. So, yeah, city. Yeah. Oh, not S I D I. Yes, you're right. S I D D H I. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, um, yeah. So cities are magic parts, but it's what they say in the East. I think city is a, a Sanskrit word, and I'm not really sure what the root of it would be. Sid. Hmm. Not really sure. Does anybody know what the city means in Sanskrit? Maybe it is a root word. Actually, since it's all to do with magic and stuff, I'd say it might be a root word. So a root word in Sanskrit is something that has no derivation. Most words have a history and they distill all the way down to a, a root Sanskrit word that's kind of like an explosion of other words come from the root word. So I'll give you one that amused, this, that's kind of amusing is that... Um, that, uh, you know, there are all these words like Arsha and Darshan. Darshan is going to visit a holy man. You have, uh, you know, tea with holy man, Darshan. And then, so all these various words with, you know, Arsha and then basically, and so I remember in the cult I was in, looking at meditation and all this, this looking at the Sanskrit stuff of, description of meditation and then they have all these arsana and stuff and then you look and you look in the datupata which is the thing that you look for all the roots of the words and follow this tree it's kind of this taxonomical tree and you find that all of these things come down to to they essentially mean sit um and and then the final root word hang on to your hats here the final root word of all this explosion of things that run into the English language all means sit or visit or, you know, uh, they all come down to this one word. Ass. Ass. A-S-S. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, ass is a root word. Is like nobody's found any anything that it's, you know, expanded from. But anyway, it's, it's important to look at any of these words. Um, I, I always try and break down the etymology of things because, you know, you you start to find out what, what's really going on, and it's always fascinating. But you you get back to the, the Aryans, and you, you suddenly it's like a fucking revelation. But I'm kind of appalled that, you know, I, I, somebody caught me out doing this on Reddit and saying, like, you know, this is all bullshit. It said like it said like words are just words. They don't they don't mean anything. You can't decompose them this way and stuff. This is crap. And I'm like, Jesus, you ought to study some linguistics. They they only know about the Aryans because of you know linguistics and and what you can learn from linguistics about the Aryans is extraordinary. So. The, the actual Aryan language, it's actually Sanskritum is what it's really called, but in its own tongue. But but it's, um, we call it Sanskrit, but it's a bit anglicized, I think. But the, the um, if you go back to, to the, um, to the Aryans and, and, and the, the, the root language is lost, but all the Indo-Germanic religions, I mean, religions, yeah, religions too, and languages. Um, they they still intact and they're very kind of rules of evolution of language and sounds and stuff that linguists have uncovered which has allowed them to go back and find out all sorts of things like the you know that they know just from the language and how it spread you can go back like a, a genetic clock almost the, the similar things in language and and they found that well you know that they know that the Aryans were patriarchal they, they knew that they invented the wheel. They were first to use a chariot, domesticated the horse. Uh, all of this shit from language, they, they had a, a patrilineal line of inheritance. It's like, how do you get this from the language? But it's all in there. So I was appalled that this, you know, there's some you know, 
current level of understanding out there is that like fuck it man words are words this is bullshit and it's like whoa dude <laughs> i got curious yeah. about yeah. word meanings one time too when i finished um reading this story called black fox running and there they called their god todd and then the main character wolfgar his mate was named tag and i looked up the meanings of those todd means death and tag means life and i'm like wow that author must have known this shit <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. No, oh, well, well. There's another thing: is if if all these libtards are not taught all this shit in school, and the quality of education is all about critical race theory, and they're not being taught any of this stuff, then then it's really dangerous because all these authors are using all. I mean, look at Tolkien. I mean, you you get all these people like Stephen Colbert, the like late night host, who's like the perfect liberal, and you know he's obsessed with Tolkien. Um, Tolkien is basically a Christian. He's using all this stuff. Uh, it's straight out of the Bible. All this, I don't think Stephen Colbert is a Catholic and he really likes all this Christian stuff. And for some unknown reason, he really likes Tolkien too. I don't know if he knows that Tolkien was smuggling Christianity into Lord of the Rings and stuff. And so, you know, the, like the Eye of Sauron and all of this stuff, it's it's in fucking Ezekiel or something. It says basically God's eye moves like a beam across the landscape. It's, it's all in. He's just taking shit. And and so is the lion and the the lion, the witch, and the the wardrobe and stuff. Like, how many people know that that's all about Christianity? The the lion is Christ and stuff. So all of these guys are using all these stories to basically subliminally um, inject this stuff into kids. So unless you tell them, like, yeah, this is Christian propaganda, they all think, oh, it's a nice story with a wardrobe and a little elfin creature and a lion and, you know, and a witch and stuff. Is no, this is it's it's Christianity smuggled in, you know, for kids. It's it's all like you know, so that when la later when they hear the Christian thing and stuff, it all fits for some unknown reason. It's like yeah, because. It got you first with this so-called kids story and Lord of the Rings and stuff, which everybody loves. And you say it's Christian propaganda, man. You got to inoculate the kids against this shit. But oh, anyway, yeah. Oh, so does anybody have any questions on all of any of this? Um, none here. Yeah, it all makes sense. Like, yeah, um, with Lord of the Rings, I knew it was Christian, you know, propaganda. Pretty easy to see that. Yeah, especially at the end where they have, you know, the king and the righteous kingdom and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, of course <laughs> they would. <laughs> yeah. What about Harry Potter? What? Um. Yeah, she's uh, she's completely raided the cupboard. Yeah. There. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. It's, it, I mean, so did camera with star wars i mean uh, in this in this video um the episode 31 i was referring to the jedi and basically there's the jedi's the spine i don't think maybe a lot of people didn't like that uh it's it's known as the jed column it it's a symbol that represents your spine and you've got to keep it straight to keep the shishunna nerve and stuff and um, the kundalini rising up you see it's got to be ramrod straight that's why i keep on saying you know the pose that we do the exercise in is like one of those pharaon pharaonic statues at like abu Simbel or the colossi and memnon the, the egyptians are all you know sitting in this kind of right angled posture and this is like in the i, I don't know how valid this is but I'm, <laughs> it comes from in my cult they, which claims it goes all the way back to Hermes Trismegistus and all these guys, which everybody claims, Freemasons, everyone, but and and Plato. It's basically that they claimed they were the Socratic school. They're basically modern, not Neoplatonists. That's, those guys are a little different, but they said basically the Pythagorean school and all of these guys had these trails that go through in secret most of the time because of the Catholic Church. But that's where I was led to believe was my school. And they said that went through the Egyptians. And and so we were taught to meditate exactly like those those statues. And the reason was the stuff that I gave is to keep the Jed column straight. The Jed column is your spinal column. That's why 
the Freemasons have 33 degrees. Those are your 33 vertebrae. You know, so all of this stuff is, it, if you get involved, everybody explains all of this stuff, and then it's a, oh, duh moment. But I, I think I upset people with it because they don't know all this stuff. It's kind of lost. Um, and so they think I'm making it up or something, but I'm not. I'm actually just reporting what I, what I was told. And it all makes sense because it all fits together. So if if they were making up a big story, they've done a very good job. <laughs> uh, but and because it it fits together in practice as well, you know, you it's you're just not an academic exercise. I mean, you go and do this stuff and put it to the test, and you'll you'll see. And so, yeah. So the anyway, the Jed column was Cameron used it. That's what the Jedi. Is the the Jed I? He's he was raiding all of this stuff and 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 using it. So yeah, but uh, J.K. Rowling she got all her stuff from um, Oxford. She 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 blended two things: is all the esoterica, and then all apparently all the characters are people that are now in government. And so if you know the the codes and stuff, you know that like Dumbledore is. You know, I don't know, and Mrs. McGonagall is Margaret Thatcher and stuff. But they were people that she went she went to college with in Oxford. So Oxford, by the way, is Hogwarts. And, they, they, uh, you know, I think you can go online where people explain all the keys to what what the real thing is. But she she's writing shit in, trolling people and stuff. Same as my videos where I'm, I'm, I'm trolling my sources and stuff, especially if I don't believe them. <laughs> also, some of the thing why one of the reasons why I put in the alien script and stuff that I was given is that's one of the ways of testing it. Because I, I, I thought, like, you know, maybe somebody would come out of the woodwork and say, like, where the fuck did you get that? And, you know, <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh, okay, so it is real. But nobody. Nobody has ever done that, so I don't know. I mean, I mean, might might not be watched enough, or maybe they didn't take the bait, or a million reasons. But anyway, I, I do a lot of testing of stuff to try and, you know, smoke out the sources and find out how genuine they are. Um, but anyway, J.K. Rowling did the same thing. She's like, she pissed a lot of people off that are now in government and stuff that went went to college with her. And then now, you know, famous. And they don't like the fact that she turned them into Dobby or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure who Voldemort is, but but anyway, if you, you know, the, there's a big cult around her and all the stuff because she's telling you stuff. She's telling you stuff about at least the English version of the deep state and stuff. So if, if you can figure out who Voldemort is, she's trying to give you clues for like, it is somebody, in, I don't know, like maybe it was Prince Philip, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's trying to expose all of this stuff and, and communicate all of it. And a lot of people too, because you, you'll get axed. You, you go too far along this and you'll get axed, man. It's like, that's that's why, yeah. It's all of this stuff is very woo, but uh, it's it's all for real, you know. All your worst conspiracy nightmares and stuff. I'm mean, trying to tell people they're all real. It's like, yeah. So all all the goodies, all the ones you know, and they basically, if you go and have a look at them, I mean, okay, like all the ones that say Mitchell and Webb would laugh at and make make fun of and liberals would laugh at this like no man they're real i mean for example like princess die was whacked like yeah she was whacked <laughs> it's like come on what's wrong with you? you you seriously can't put this story together it's a child can put it together but it's like um if you if you want to see around out the epstein thing and all of all of that thing is and if you really want to convince yourself that like what they say on the far right and stuff is not far wrong. <laughs> the far right is not far wrong. Um, is uh, go and look at the the what, what is his name? Uh, Dutroy, uh, Luke Dutroy, whatever. But go and have a look at the Dutroy murders. I've said this before, I think, but I think I think it's Luke Dutroy. 
Um, a, a Belgian person, uh, or a Dutch person, would, would would instantly know because you know their backs go up and they they embarrassed by this whole thing about um, Detroit. And so it was, it's basically a guy who was a serial killer, but they found, they found all, he was basically, in a, you see, it's a, you can see it's not kosher because he, he had, um, he's an unemployed builder and he had like eight houses or something, maybe more um, from what I can remember. And then it's like, how does an unemployed builder buy all these houses? And then in, in these houses, they found, all these kids in cages and you know brutal murders and stuff all buried in the garden and so i think his name is to troy but anyway the, this guy uh gets caught and um you know the judge there's something wrong with the fucking judge there everybody knows that um because he got off with like a, a wrap on the fingers virtually um and so it's like you know, this is not right, man. You can see that whole thing about, uh, and so what, what the guy said was he was, he's trafficking. He's basically, he's part of a vast network. And you can see because the whole, you know, the whole establishment and stuff, and, you know, you could see the whole uh, legal system and that just, just clam up. So you can, you know, you look at that story closely, you can see, yeah, it's like all these conspiracy theories are right, man. There's no ways that that would have ended up uh, the way it did that story um without you can you can just get a peek that there's something really really rotten in the state state of denmark but see yeah i mean I think people in in um, in belgium and that they they know but it, you know all of these guys are in the same camp you you'll see they you don't have to go very far you'll see that they're connected to epstein and then and then it really gets dark because it goes to gates and all of the, the favorites. And so, yeah, these things are all have a lot more real than, than you know, but I, you know, you, we seem to be getting to some kind of end game. Right. So I'm thinking that, um, you know, King's North saying, like, yeah, well, this is revelation and the curtain gets pulled back. And it's like, I don't think he's really ready for what he sees behind the curtain. It's, um, <laughs> um, I mean, you know, let's not even get to the pandemic. And he was like, oh my God. But well, anyway. Prince Andrew was just stripped of his um, royal duties, right? Because of the no, he's, prince, he's of his title. He's not a prince. His title. Anymore. Oh wow. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the con artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> but you see the. These guys eat their own, right? So he he got exposed for doing what... There's a long tradition of this. If you go back to Jack the Ripper and stuff, Jack, uh, um, his... Mm, I can't remember who the prince was at the time, but I think it's kind of the, the equivalent in the Victorian era of Prince um, of Prince Andrew. His, his double ganger in the Victorian era... Um, he was suspected of uh, the Ripper murders and stuff. And so this, this stuff is not like it wasn't invented yesterday. <laughs> this has been going on for a long time. I think the, the, the Ripper murders eventually came down to this guy. It's pretty well known that he was this um, this Jewish emigre that, that went to America and was put in a mental home. So they kind of shut, shut it down, shut down the investigation and stuff. But there again he was also kind of a bit like detroit so you never know if that was a cover-up and stuff but anyway this whole whole system is rotten as you can possibly believe well it's interesting um to find out if the former prince andrew will implicate um others um but if, or if he will just be muzzled no no i can't see it no, I can't see it. This, these guys are too powerful. So it's just, just, you know, I think after uh, Jelaine Maxwell and stuff, they will, they, they'll wrap it up now. Uh, I don't see many more revelations coming. You'll, you'll see some, 
I mean, unless they've they've cut Andrew off to dry, you know, which they do. But I mean, he he, you know, he, they can't cut him off too badly because he he knows all the dirt and stuff. So so you know, he can cut a deal, <laughs> and so yeah. You, you see, you get little glimpses behind the thing, but then the curtain goes back pretty quick. You never get the big dump of data. You never find out what Julian Assange has and stuff. <laughs> anyway, fun stuff, eh? <laughs> Well, yeah, it's anyway. uh, the system doing what it does best, which is creating money and madness. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, uh, if you, this goes back a long way, right? And so then if you say, you know, money is the root of all evil, then a lot of people will correct you and say, no, that's not actually what it says in the Bible. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. In other words, what they're trying to say is like, it's, you know, it's this argument that the transhumanists use, you know, guns don't kill people, people kill people. It's like technology is neutral, can be put to all of any use. And it's like horseshit. And so they're trying to say, look, there's nothing wrong with money. It's just the love of money. And I say, no, there's plenty wrong with money because it's basically, you know, the root of all evil is the guys who made the money. And he's like, follow the money. Get back to the vampire squid. Yeah, you get all this is the vampire squid. Yeah, it's just like how you said in the Metropolis, where she was like writing the script, the savior. Oh nope, the mediator. It's probably in the Bible. You know, when the guy's writing that, money is the root. Of, oh shit, nope, we're gonna do the love of money <laughs> because it's clearly the guys in power that are doing that. So he probably slipped up and he's like, nope, cross that out. The love of money, not money is oh, evil. Man, the love. <laughs> oh, they've been revising the shit for ages. They've, you know how bad. These guys are the, like uh, when I was in school, right? We did like divinity studies, and it was done by the the chaplain to, took us for divinity studies, and he told us that yeah, we we were kind of like gnarly schoolboys and atheists and stuff, so we like uh, you gave them a really hard time, um, and so you say like you know. How how do you know other than the Bible that you know what's the historical evidence for Jesus? And he said, Ah, it's in Josephus. And so we all learned and we're like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, there he is. He talks a little paragraph about Josephus. Okay, well that fucking nails it for the case for the historical Jesus. It's only much later that <laughs> the scholars have since worked out that if you actually see the man the manuscript, it's kind of like written between the lines, just like some some fraud came later, you know, the, about 300 years later and stenciled it into Josephus because people were asking, hey, uh, if Jesus is a historical figure, why doesn't like historians of the time like Josephus mention him? And then look, okay, and the Pope went and like, correct that. <laughs> like, so, but they, they, you know, more, you know, modern forensic techniques have caught them all out and they, you know, they're, they're horrendous things that the, the church has done all along to like rewrite history. And, and so, so you still meet Christians who say, oh, no, there was a historical Jesus because of Josephus. And say, you don't know that that's a fraud <laughs> that was inserted by a monk. I think they even know the name of the bastard. But, you know, it's like this, uh, is, this the vampire squid is pretty fucking old man we're talking you know older than the roman empire we're talking sumerian so this, this, yeah, it's quickly get woo the moloch <laughs> i keep on mentioning moloch and stuff but this is the bull it's, it goes all the way back to shamanic times so the, the shobi cave that bull is <laughs> it's moloch and you can trace moloch all the way and so what is this it's like it's your alien cortex is inside you the vampire squid is, is inside you. Oh, well, We've done a little tour today, haven't we? Oh, yeah, well, it, it's that cave with the lions and the bull, right? Oh, no, that's paintings. the Chovy cave. Um, oh, the, okay. the, um, oh, I'm talking about the Alaska. I was thinking of the Alaska cave, okay, but the 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 Chovy the cave is the really amazing one, and that's the one where 
um, yeah, they uh, they have the the money shot or the the whole climax of it's obviously an initiation shamanic initiation um, thing. So so you know as you go through it, what they must be doing is telling you you know when when you die, you know all this because it's it's also in the um, the Book of the Dead, not the Tibetan Book of the Dead, the one in the the funeral texts of um, of uh, in in Egypt, and also in the Mithraic texts, the very very scant information from the Mithraic cult. But they, they, you know, they got all these things where they're telling people all this. When such and such says this, you say that, and they're giving them all. And it's clear what they're doing. They're telling them what happens after death. You've got this night journey. And you're going to meet all these creatures. It's the same in Native American tradition. When you draw a circle and you see all these beasts come out at you, and the and the shamans will tell you, you know, this is what you'll see. And then when you're given this challenge, you, so they'll say, you know, the the elk spirit will come out and ask you, you know, are you pure of heart and spirit? And then your answer is. By thrice this and by the setting star, you blah, blah, blah. And then you got to know all of the shit. Get one line wrong. That's it. You get sent to this monster. And the Greek thinks this kind of hybrid of crocodile and hippo. <laughs> but, the, you know, it's kind of like a fire if you get one of these things wrong. So they, they take your initiates through, clearly through this the thing like the Lascar Cave. And so then once you know this, then it's like, wow, you're getting a sudden insight into their cosmology and what, you know, their religion. And so where does it all go? It goes to the Cave of the Lionesses. And there you can see the whole thing. You know it's a shaman because they, there's no human being in it, but there's this bull figure um, that's basically raping this lioness. And you say, what the hell? This is clearly the high point of the whole thing. But they call it the shaman <laughs> because he's got a bull's set or like shaman, you know, basically the, the kit that the guy in the January the 6th, the, the um, capital shaman, he's uh, basically got that on his head. And so, so you say, well, what's going on? And he says, well, you just follow through to Anatolia and stuff, and it's Sibylle's lions. So it's basically the yeah you can figure it all out <laughs> that there's uh sibley and she's lying says it's all there for you to see it's not not that hard to figure out once people give you a few, a few clues and it's not hard because then you see it over and over again that it comes comes out again and again. but it goes all the way to go back to tepe i'd like to i'd like to explain all of this stuff to you from go back to tepe so with that uh... Uh, with that whole cave initiation and shamanic technique, are they doing that? Um, is it like sort of meditative practice to though, where they're trying to like uh, initiate people into the tribe and like relieve death anxiety or like? Um, is yeah, that it's, a, it's, it's, it's one or two things. They either um, initiation rights into into adulthood or they adapts <coughs> people that are going to become shamans. And so they're given a special initiation right because <clears throat> they unusual, probably schizophrenic, in fact. And so they're, they're taking these guys that have unusual powers and unusual states of mind, and they might be initiating them into being shamans or to cure them or that kind of thing. So it's not, I mean, you're talking a lot of time, a lot of different tribes, a lot of motivations, but the same theme is always um, getting them over their death anxiety. So this is something that you know Ernest Becker missed in the denial of death. He got the whole thing that the whole problem is death anxiety. That's what's, in fact, actually in this episode thirty-one thing, I kind of went over this again. That the whole thing about meditation is about liberation, and then it's like what it's really trying to do is get you over your death anxiety, and and you know the the death anxiety comes from your ego. Your ego is your alien cortex, and your ego. And don't get into is it the id or is it oh, fuck off? You know what I'm talking about. And the the, the um uh you know this ego is scared of dying, especially this freaking head on your shoulder and how to get ahead in advertising. It's scared of dying, and so it doesn't want to be killed or cut off. 
And so this is the aim of saying, like, you know, get rid of the second head that you've got sticking out of your shoulder. That's the thing that's scared of dying. Chop it off and kill it. And then so, so they're giving them, you know, all the information of how, how to do that. But it's, uh, it's rebirth. So it's like it's, it's two things. It's like saying when you die, this is what you'll go through. And so doing, they're actually taking them through a rebirthing process that you could get in a new age ashram or something they still do it they'll put you in a sack they'll do they're like, these things have actually come down even into hack new age culture but um yeah the um there's always an element of your first death so it's you you know you experience a death and then you're reborn again as somebody as an immortal in effect because because you don't have an ego that can die um you don't have that anxiety so it's kind of like you're just just okay with you know, being a lump of carbon and going going back to the soil, dust the art and dusting it like, yes, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm okay with it now. Phew. And so everybody is going nuts because um, they can't make this breakthrough. But the rebirthing thing was done um, very, you know, very well. Historians and I think it's all symbolic, but it's not. It's psychological. And they always involve, you know, sort of repetition of the womb and stuff like that. So you see the basket, the kista, and um, you know it's a rebirthing thing because it's, or you, know, you can see in the Mithraic things, the kistas there. Um, you can see Mithras coming out of a kista, so clearly the rebirth. And you're, you're going to always see a snake, the, the snake, the same snake that you can see on the Caduceus. So you, as soon as you see a snake, you know what it is, and it's always a rebirthing thing. And the reason is because a snake sh sheds its skin. And so, you know, what the ancients thought was this: the snake had died, and a new snake had come out, like risen, like the phoenix. And so they thought snakes were immortal because if you've ever found a snake skin, it looks like a, a dead snake, and then you know, they've seen the the new snake crawling out so they thought that snakes were infinite so any symbology like that is you know it's a, a rebirthing ritual and um and so you can as once you have that clue you can see it all in the christian bible and all of that kind of stuff because they're all reusing it but if you go back to go back to Tepe, you can see these three kisters these three baskets uh, and you can see them in samaria and stuff now you know hancock and all of these guys you see, everybody always projects themselves in. So Hancock and Graham Hancock and that is, he likes his weed and his drugs and thinks that, you know, psilocybin is the key to understanding these things, opening up the mind and stuff. But because he's so vested in that, then he says, well, what's the basket? Well, that must be your little shopping bag with all your, your dope. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on. He, he hasn't done enough research to see what a kista is and the kista mystica which is the Louisian mysteries and all that. But there so, are, you know, there are the three baskets right there on pillar 43, the vulture stone, which is like the most important thing they've discovered so far in in, in Gebekli Tepe. And so you, you know this is part of the ritual you can see, and then you can see, oh, well, they've got the scorpion. They've got headless guy with, you know, a wrecked penis, um, riding on a vulture, and it's like, as soon as you see all these things, you know straight away it's it's cosmology. They're looking at asterism, and then you know the the, the guy with the penis is Orion's belt. <laughs> I mean, it's Orion, right? So if if I'm not losing you on all of this and you're getting bored, then I'll I'll, I'll go further and explain that. Well, okay, when you're a kid, or this is what happened to me when I was a kid. I was you'd go on camping trips and school camping trips, and they would teach you about the night sky and all the constellations and all upside down, of course, since the Southern hemisphere for me, but the, um, the, uh, you know, they would get to Orion's belt and then, you know, they would always tell you like, Oh, you know, Orion has this scabbard hanging down. You have the three stars and the scabbard hanging down. Like I'm, I'm bored into it. <laughs> And then suddenly later reading, like, obviously it's not a scabbard. They're just you're doing a euphemism for schoolboys because it's, like, not suitable for work. It's like, obviously it's his penis. So once you know that, then you then you can see oh, well, a headless guy with a 
a prominent penis or anything fucked with the head, right? then and and a prominent penis, you know it's alright. And so yeah, you can see that straight out there in Gebekli Tepe. Um, uh, I, it's kind of interesting when I went to Gebekli Tepe. That um, I spoke to the guy at the gift shop. He's actually in the video when in the Gebekli Tepe thing. Um, uh, and um, yeah, I actually give his name, I think. But anyway, he he's he's the. It was his. Uh, grandfather i think that was who owned the land where gebekli tepe was and actually found the first thing now that's all been written out you, you go and read the official accounts of gebekli tepe and it's all about oh these guys came from such and such a university and they picked up this shit and then klaus schmidt had a grandmother it's a horse shit all of that's a fucking lie what happened was the 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 guy who owned the land this guy's grandfather he found this little statue. It's now in the museum at San Lofa. They just don't put it out in public because, you know, all the school children come and see it. But it's it's basically he found the statue with this huge dong, this huge erect penis. So he he, he knew it was important. He took it uh, to the authorities. And then that that was the first evidence that there was some something serious going on there. Now, um, the, you know, all the academic papers, all the academics all write themselves into the story and write this guy out. This guy had his land confiscated. So now if you go to Gebekli Tepe, there's a park, car park and a visitor center and all of this stuff and all the excavations. They're happening on this guy. He wasn't paid a penny. They just confiscated his fucking land and said, thanks. It's a World Heritage Site now. And the guy said, hey, how about compensation? They said, no, nah, fuck off. <laughs> and so he was the guy who discovered it. They took his land. And they, you know, these, so the guy told me they've been trying to sue the Turkish government since, you know, for the 70s or something. And uh, that's UNESCO. Yeah, that's UNESCO. But yeah, this is the treatment you get every time. But the, um, <clears throat> and so, so uh, anyway, that statue that he found, it's like you, um, I've got Klaus Schwab's book and a few, not Klaus Schwab, uh, Schmidt's book, um, Klaus Schmidt. And, um, and so I've got pictures of that. I actually put a picture in the video of, of it. And I've got a Turkish book that has the picture of the original statue. But because it's this guy um, with a huge penis, you know that it's, it's Orion. And then that's kind of borne out by Pillar 43. Um, but so, yeah, if, so as soon as you have that clue, you can go and have a look at all the Orion mythology is called, um, like, um, uh, any, any blind thing, anything, a blind man who gets his sight and stuff and look at the Greek mythology of, um, uh, oh God, I just had a lacuna here. Um, Kekalion. Kekalion, yeah. Yeah, hopefully it's Deucalion. But anyway, look at the story of Deucalion and the nymph who was his eyes. And all this is the metaphor for what you're doing in meditation. And it goes all the way back to Gebekli Tepe and back to the Lanskar Cave, the Shobi Cave. And so it all fits together very neatly. It's just rather amazing that, and you know, anthropologists and these scholars, they don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, I have a question about the uh, the cave with the bull and the lioness on the alien cortex video. You were probably doing a nod at like the you know the black shamans, the ones that clipped you know with the um, rape of the planet. So on the other hand, if it was like you know the the light shamans trying to ground people into mortality in Earth, is that like a metaphor for like the union of like the two hemispheres or something like that? Yeah, the point I was trying to make in in that is that um, okay, it's it's major sacrilege. You're seeing something different. You see because the the ancient religions, the universal sacral uh, you know, religion, the shamanic religions that um, were of the mother goddess. So you're seeing a big sacrilege in the Shobi cave because there's Sibylle who you know Sibylle's lioness, which represents Sibylle, and clearly. The shaman guy in a bull suit is getting the better of her. 
So the, this is not cool right there. You can immediately see there's a reversal. As soon as you've seen the a reversal, you know, what is it, class? Alien cortex is like always an inversion of it. So you're seeing a clear inversion. So something's gone wrong here. They're not, they're not praising Sibley in that. They're like fucking raping her. Even to the point where you can see the, the lioness that like clearly she's not, you know, she's not a, you know, she's been raped, but somebody's come there and just done a little touch to make her smiling. So she's kind of enjoying her rape. But clearly you're seeing that these guys are kind of, cannot be cool guys because they, it's a masculine thing. You, you know, it's like you cannot imagine priestesses or anything to do with the Sibley or the mother goddess. And so it, it must be shamans. So what you see here and what the case I'm trying to make, which you see in Gobekli Tepe, is they're no longer doing genuine transformation. Then they, they clearly this whole setup with the cave and stuff is like virtual reality. It's their version of virtual reality. So you're seeing a very early version in that cave of uh, the metaverse. They're, they're taking somebody in the metaverse and um, and they must be using drugs, entheogens, right? So so straight away, this is not kosher. Um, now you make enemies quickly because, you know, all this woo crowd, they think drugs are the key and open up the doors and perception. I say, no, it's the opposite. So the, the drugs are, again, the substitution, and they, again, it's the alien cortex as protection. You, you see, what I was taught is that you make all of these things in your own head. You know, if you actually take these drugs, then, then you know, the, the actual things like your pineal gland will stop making them because they have governors and suppressors, and they say, like, no, they have regulation, and they say, okay, there's enough DMT now, and so, if anything... You're encouraging the blocking hormones. All, most of the hormones work with, you know, inhibitors and and uh, stimulators and stuff like that. So it's like, um, so uh, you know, if anything, you're actually increasing the inhibiting chemicals because you're giving yourself in a bottle. You're giving yourself these drugs that are are um, kind of an overdose, and then you, you're going to, you know, encourage. The, the activation of the then corresponding inhibiting uh, blocking chemicals. So, so yeah, you get to have a little excursion into it's like psyching tourism. But then when at the end of that, it's like you're going to need more. You're on a hedonic treadmill. And, and then when, when you finally realize what this game is, then, then, you know, you realize, oh, my fuck, I've been – Diverted. There's been an inversion. I've been sold all these these drugs and stuff by these fake gurus, and they they're my worst enemy. They're stopping me getting to the true. See, so yeah, the whole thing, the the whole ceremony in the kista and stuff is is a substitution for a real psychological rebirth. So that's what I keep on saying is that they're all, all trying to prevent your real psychological rebirth. So these guys are substituting your your real chemicals in your head for. One's in a bottle, which they sell you, funnily enough. Ho, ho. And then, you know, they sell you an actual rebirth with a symbolic one. And then, so all of the stuff is the alien cortex beginning to do the symbolic substitution. And so, yeah, there, so there you can see the substitution with the lioness. So it's basically instead of worshipping the mother and stuff, they're saying, like, these shamans of, like, they're priests. They've got one over the mother. They're raping her. So basically... um so maybe uh, uh, generations they were using that for real rebirth and transformation, but along the line, maybe the culture got involved with trade or agriculture, or created a hierarchy, and then it steadily changed to you know the the inversion of that to get people in the hierarchy and the the system and building civilization. Is that what probably yeah, happened over the again? So they were they were adding on to the art over the years until they got to the end. Okay, I, I totally see what you're saying now, yeah. Yeah, you see, you see, if you look in Africa, and so where the, the Shangomas and, and those guys, they're, they're doing real stuff. They're teaching all the stuff that, that I was taught. And then, so you say, like, why are these guys using all this substitution and paraphernalia and that? And say, like, they're frauds. They 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 suffer. They're doing this for money. So the the you know they're saying, you know the the genuine shaman guys and stuff who like, 
probably being kicked out. They kind of, you can see it again in like the Bible. It's like John the Baptist. John the Baptist looks like the real shaman. The, the Jesus figure lo looks like a charlatan. And, and you know, I'm not the first one to come up with this. There's a, if you look at the Dan Brown guys and all of those guys, and um, uh, if you look at Da Vinci and or a lot of the artists in, the, in Florence and stuff, they're clearly Johannites. Johannites are guys that worshipped John, John the Baptist, and said he was the true Messiah. This other guy, they call him the imposter, the Christ figure. And, and it goes so, I mean, and they also do a J.K. Rowling is try and communicate the stuff. So if you have a look at, say, um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he, he does the Madonna on the rocks. And there's it's basically, you can see St. John there and um, and the, the Christ thing. And then, you know, basically in the picture, there's Christ with two fingers, which is symbolic. And then he's he's blessing John the Baptist, who's an older kid. And the, uh, you know, clearly it's like, well, this is against the Bible. It was in the Bible. It says that John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So why did, you know, why did Leonardo da Vinci do this inversion? It's like he was doing a correction because he's a Johanna. All the things, I mean, his very last, you know, picture was St. John. You know, clearly he's always St. John, St. John, St. John. And in the last picture that Leonardo did, is St. John with one finger up. And, and he's saying, I am the one. I am the thing. And he's smiling. Just the guys are Johannites. And so they, it's a terrible heresy. They, the church tried to stamp it out, but didn't manage it. And so there, these, um, you know, the, the, the Madonna picture with the, with the baby Jesus blessing John, um, you know, all the, it was actually in a church, in a sepulcher. And so all the, all the visitors to the church would come along and say, oh, okay, but why is Jesus older than John? Why is John a baby? And, and then they were like, no, no, you're mixing them up. Um, you know, it's basically Jesus is sitting on the Madonna's lap. That's the baby. And, you know, the older kid is John. And then people would go, uh, but hang on, doesn't the Bible say that John blessed Jesus? And they were like, Leonardo did this deliberately to fuck them over. So they got they got so upset with people switching the two that now they came in and they did a cross of St. John and put it in the little kid's hand. So they'd say like, now no one can make the mistake that clearly the one on the left is St. John, and we'll prove it to you by sticking this grotesque cross of St. John and sticking it in the crook of his arm. But, you know, um, art historians have come back later, and they've said, no, oh, this is just a freaking reed and stuff that somebody stuck on. <laughs> they say, yeah, they did it. They did it deliberately because they got pissed off with people mistaking the two, which is what they neither wanted. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm pretty sure that this wasn't... We, we're pretty far off the beaten track for the for the um, for the agenda. What was what was the other stuff on the agenda? Uh, let me take a look. Meditation, in the manifesto. Well, I, I did a little bit on the meditation, right? So yeah, um, yeah. Did did anybody do the exercise in the week of? of actually meditating and trying to like call everybody up. Sadly, Did not it... me, but you were all in my thoughts. <laughs> so I, I did. Um, and I, I made a little log of, you know, all the times that, that if I had the idea or got the, suddenly remembered it and then I went and logged it during the week. I did on Thursday night. Um, yeah, sorry, I was trying to look at the um, look at the agenda, but yeah, I did on Thursday night. Yeah, we must go into that more and uh, try try more some of the woo stuff. You see, Gary wants to do 
more Wu stuff, um, where we, we try and do some of these experiments in Wu. And yeah, I'm keen to do it if every if I just don't want to uh, freak everybody out and piss them off and say like, oh, no, I'm not into Wu. No, that's it. I'm out of the extinction audience and stuff. Maybe yes, make it uh, more scientific and actually create a log <laughs> and share it among well, ourselves. I don't know. No, what Excel the files. Was, was the suggestion from the last meeting was we try and do this with a log and stuff. And, but yeah, I don't want to alienate anybody uh, too quickly because use, yeah, use the discord and let's, yeah. And then, but the thing is to try and get some like telepathic communication between us and like, I feel like yeah, it is not necessary to freak anybody out or gaslit people and have them all run because you, you'll see it naturally anyway. It's, you don't have to force it. Um, I don't know. Does Discord have a calendar feature? Nope. Oh. Um, speaking of Woo stuff, Gary uh, showed me a symbol he was working on and said it looked like one of my drawings and he wondered to me in message he's like is it possible that we had some kind of like subconscious resonance here let me open the stream and show you i've got i pulled up the symbol and the drawing just now let's see uh how do i do this is it this one uh let's see all right so this is let's see is it working all right so this is the drawing yes, it is. okay and then i put the symbol in this canvas that gary did oh let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing it still is work in progress so there's the sketch and then this is the symbol gary did and he said it looked kind of similar to the drawing and he did this symbol and i was like yeah i can kind of see the the resemblance it almost kind of looks like the wings and stuff. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. Oh, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, that is interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I would love them to say what uh, the dot and the bar. Uh, let me pull up the message. He probably does. I think he said the dot is like a head. Let me yeah. see. I'm going to skim the message real quick um subconsciously influenced by your sketch in an abstract uh way with wings on each side central body legs and so i added the vestigial head at the top okay mm. yeah yeah so that's really interesting uh, interesting yeah. he added the head because i've been going on about uh i hope it's deucalion um the the greek version of um of um of orion um and um and that's the headless one the guy on the pillar 43 and gabagli tepe is headless so uh, interesting gary put a head on <laughs> yeah um, um but yeah that's interesting but um that kind of age figure um features you know graham hancock went to town on that age figure that age symbol is um is all over go back to tapping and, and pillar 43. um so it's i think that what the h is is um is a male and female so they're like two halves of the male and female and they do a connection in the middle so it's kind of so symbolic of mating and also symbolic of um the the divine union so this 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 is the Harris Gamos and the divine wedding and so so the, the main central figures in Gebekli Tepe are a male uh, column uh, they built like T's so and headless by the way so you have these two T's that are facing each other and obviously this is the central theme is this kind of Adam and Eve figure in the middle of um, the temple complex in the, in the middle around big things you know I, in one of my video in the Gebekli Tepe thing I'm, standing in a replica in the St. Lothar Museum at the base of them. You can see how big these things are. I mean, these things are done without tools, right? Without metal and stuff. It's just freaking phenomenal. But the, um, uh, if you try and interpret this, which anthropologists and 
archaeologists don't like to do. They just keep it at arm's length. But uh, uh, this figure of this you know, kind of Adam and Eve figure and uh, Deucalion and uh, Pyra, um, all, all of these things, they again, they go come out in alchemy. And you can see Jung wrote a lot about the, the divine wedding um, and um, the Hieros Gamos, and it's the union of, union of opposites and uh, and all of that. So that that's I think what the H is as well is the union of opposites. And if you go and have have a look at the origin of the letter H, you, you'll see it goes back and probably goes back to Teth. Oh, that is so interesting. Yeah, because that sketch. I mean, I've been working on it for a while, but it's based on a dream I had. I think I explained it before. It's a dream of a phoenix being coiled upon by that serpent and i interpreted that because i did some research i'm like what the fuck is going on in the stream so i did research and i found you know that greek god fanny's with a serpent coiled around him and it, it, he just appeared in my dream as a phoenix i guess and then the serpent is actually the goddess nyx i interpreted her as the gnostic serpent of the moon because you know gnosticism yeah. if you invert it they have the story you know demiurge is yahweh um the world is sacred not the Plato's world of forms and so it's like the the union of like the fire of the phoenix of life and consciousness with earth so and the universe and then I did a little research on Nyx and there's not a lot of research on her because she's night and you and it's all about ambiguity you can't define it and so I was like yeah this is this yeah. is this probably has to be it yeah uh, so the very earliest uh representation of this I think is the uh, Deus uh, Leontocephalus. So there's uh, um, in uh, in Sumeria, Jung Jung riffed on this big time, the Deus Leontocephalus, and it's 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 a the lion-headed god, de, you know, Deus is Zeus god, um, and um, uh, uh, Leontocephalus means lion-headed. So it's the lion-headed god. And he's holding the staff and he's holding the key, uh, all very symbolic. But he has a snake, uh, the, the Caduceus, uh, going up him. So in, in other words, they're saying the whole, the whole image of that person is is a Caduceus. Then um, you you must you better see the this episode thirty one there where hopefully I, I went to the the the, the was scepter. So the what the scepter is. In, in the staff and all of that is is as as far as I can make out is is your spine. Again, they, Egyptologists don't really know what the was scepter is, but you can easily see if you just turn it upside down, it represents a spine. There's a little little crescent on the top. It, it's your rocker. Literally, when you say you're off your rocker, at the top of your spine is this, exactly that. And when you go down, there's this kind of strange. Um, little thing that looks like, you know, some people say, oh, well, it's um, it's Osiris's head, not Osiris, uh, 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 Torte's head. So Torte and the, and so so, uh, and then Anubis and stuff looks kind of like Torte. And there's, they they don't know what the animal is Torte, but it's like it's like you can see it's a it's an odd fark, if you know, in in and so it's a. Artfark is a creature of the night, and it represents death because the artfark sweeps, sweeps, sweeps the ants with the tongue. So it's like it's a metaphor for cutting, cutting down people with the scythe, and so that's what it is. But the was scepter is an upside down spine, and, and the head on it is the sacrum bone. So I'm pretty sure I went at least somewhere around that episode 31. So if any of this resonates with you, I think I did it in the. Yeah, yeah, I think because I've watched all those videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you mentioning mentioning this the spine and the the scepter. Yeah, being the same thing. Yeah. So I, I, hopefully, I went through all of this. The reason why it's inverted, it's in the was scepter is an inverted spine. And I hope you're getting the symbology, is they thought that you know people procreated by the spirit coming down the spine and out your genitals. So what all of this is is a, is about. Um, sexual abstinence and using this powerful sexual energy and transmuting it into kundalini so it reverses goes back into your head and so it's an inversion of nature that you get reborn so your natural course is to be 
you, gen, you, you, they thought you give up some of your soul to your kids and have, you know, propagate that way, and then you die. And so, obviously, if you want to be immortal, what's the trick? Well, you go through the logic. You're trying to invert the natural course of events. And so, how would you do that? Well, since you come from your head out through your genitals, then clearly, if you turn that energy around, you can come back into your head. So that's what they're doing. <laughs> and by that way, they get onto, onto meditation and um, rebirth. But it's what, what I'm saying in it is these, these are sh false prophets, right? These are priests. That are, th these are the early transhumanists trying to figure out how do I make myself immortal? Yeah, so it's the way crazy. You make yourself immortal is by getting rid of the alien cortex. But now, here, what they're trying to do is saying, no, no, I want to leave the alien cortex. And I wanted to live. So it's the, it's the little head on your shoulder that's trying to live. Yeah, it's amazing how the extent they go through to invert this stuff. Um, uh, I think, yeah, there's a, another passage in Moby Dick where they talk about that. He, he references the science of phrenology and how they're studying skulls. And he talks about the whale skull. And then he concludes that science is a passing myth and that I want to look at someone's spine to judge you know their character and i was like yeah <laughs> this guy gets it <laughs> yeah the dead column there you go man so anyway okay i guess we better so we're, i'm gonna call that uh, at least uh, one episode f here for the for meditation and then the other subjects we'll get to later because it's getting long now all right any more Anybody got anything they got to say before we wrap this up? No, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, sorry, sorry, this might have been a bit of a boring one, but I think I think um, maybe I drained myself a little bit this morning. <laughs> like, I mean, if you didn't get well, your yeah, money, four out hours. Of this one, a bit of a morning one. <laughs> yeah, sure for like. Money. It was nearly four hours this morning. So, so if you total, it's like what, like six hours, <laughs> five hours with both of them. Ufology <laughs> takes it out of me. It really, it drains me, drains me that stuff. It really, yeah. So anyway, I um, okay. So let's wrap this up and just do the the exercise and just end off. <sighs> Ufology. Oh, I'd love to let that go. Oh, I hate little green men. Okay. Breathe deep. In with the sanity. Out with the little green men. Banish the transhumanist bastards. And return to monkey. Oh, what a relief. Om Paramatmane Namah All right, everybody. Good to return to Monkey. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so pass around that Eastern Extinction Eye to any UFO enthusiasts. They yeah, probably won't watch it, though. <laughs> get, when, when, when the big ship comes down, let the bastards get on there. They're going to be recycled, and we're going to return to Monkey. Yeah, ro roll out the red carpet for them too, so they can, and then like push them yeah. towards it, like put candy drop. Yeah, like, get on there, <laughs> leave. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't don't uh, let anybody see any of the videos today. If you you know, if they assholes, because <laughs> we definitely don't need assholes on this planet. We're like assholes on the spaceship. Basically, if uh, this is don't look up. Yeah, we definitely want all the guys assholes on the ship. So this is don't look up, stay on Earth. And like, yeah, I'm I'm hoping it doesn't end like don't look up. I'm saying I'm hoping like Earth is fine. Arsehole's gone, <laughs> gone on the spaceship. Goodbye. We can we can make our own movie and entitle it "Don't Come Back." <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, nice. We have a neighbor who who tells us her son that don't come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They they, they can it. go 
they can go rape the sterile plains of Mars and leave Earth alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Leave our mother, you bastards. <laughs> go, go fuck up some other planet, you planet destroying fuckheads. So it's like, yeah, okay, that's really neat. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and get my my painting of Sibley done by Easter. Hopefully I can get it done. Uh, hopefully I can get it done. Drawing drawing six lionesses is hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, if if you get it half as good as the Neanderthals in the Shobi Cave did, you know, it's gonna be uh, awesome. I can show the work in progress, but hold on, let me put a little sensor bar so we don't get uh, flagged for nipple. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, don't, no nips on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Discord name. Good, good. Goodbye and thank you so much. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, neat. oh, yeah. Thanks, eh? Have a good week. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> you hey, too. Very, Take care. Very, very Lion King, that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. Okay. Well, it's cool. What? Bye. Oh, cool. Uh, hey, um, what about putting a um, uh, a cobra lily, the fruit of the cobra lily in it? Oh, I could probably do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you probably can't see it on the screen, uh, the stream, but yeah, there's a sketch of like five lionesses in there, but it's really light so far. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, the stream is poor quality, but yeah, um, I'll I'll research that and see if I can put something like that in there. Yeah, nice drawing, cool. lovely. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, have a good week, and see you next Sunday. You too. Let's Take care. Sunday. Keep a log of meditations. Let's let's carry on and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'll do that.